This week on Jim Wright Live, we interview the one, the only, Mr. Kenny Santucci, and we learn how you can leverage social media to help stand out in the crowd. Check it out. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Jim Wright Live. I am your host, Marcus Gersey, and I have with me today the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Kenny Santucci. What's up, dude? Hey, buddy. How are you? I'm doing great, man. So stoked to have you on. Um, and for those of you watching, if you don't know Kenny, get with the program. Uh, he's all over the scene. Uh, he's been, uh, you've been the host for the, the Fit Aid show. You work with Reebok as an ambassador. You run Solace New York. Um, and the man's been on the scene for a long time, knows what's up. So excited to have you on here and uh, get to uh, pick your brain a little bit. Honored to be a part of the show. Awesome, I man. Really, I really appreciate it. When I got the email, I was like, wow, this is cool. So thank you very much. Uh, right on, man. Cool. So um, where I'd like to start is um, tell us a little bit about yourself, man. What's, what's your journey been? I feel like you've You've had such a rich story here uh, in the, the fitness business space, if you will, um, and it's been really cool to watch you progress. We've, we've come in contact many times over the years, and, uh, but tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah, um, so I grew up, uh, you know, I was kind of a tortured soul when I was a kid. I was really heavy, really fat, um, and I just didn't understand why. It was kind of the, uh, the idea that I didn't understand why everybody else in my family um, was overweight, but everybody I went to school with was so skinny and athletic, and I was just this fat, awkward kid. I, remember, I was just telling a buddy the other day the story about myself. When I was in fifth grade, I was on the basketball team, and I had to be the center because I was fat and tall and kind of awkward. And um, when you know, when you're a kid, they give you these, like little playing cards, right? You, you got your name on the back and your weight and all that shit. And I actually had to lie about my weight when I was a kid. I was like 150 pounds when everybody else was like 80 or 90. Mm -hmm. um, and I never wanted to feel like that again. And I wanted to make sure that I could teach other people how to not feel like that ever again. Um, so I truly feel that since I was a kid, my whole life journey is to not become successful, but teach other people how to become successful as well. You know, I, I always said I used to do some TV back in the day and I never considered they're winning some winning with my friends I, I i've been known to always have like a non of buddies with me because i feel like winning involves more than just one person you know everybody should win um so you know fast forward a little bit i got into the fitness world got my first nasm um certification got well over 10, 10 years ago now um you know worked at equinox when i first started uh did some personal training when I was in, out living in Jersey, opened my first gym back in 2012, I believe, 2013, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. um, kind of had you know, the trials and tribulations of opening up your first space, came back to the city, and uh, you know, long story short, kind of uh, running solace now. So, Yeah, and you guys are known to be, um, I'm, I've heard it so many different times in different ways, but you guys run one of the top operations in in new york so i mean you guys you guys are kicking ass over there yeah it, it's funny i just actually had uh had lunch with some some new friends um and they were saying the same thing they're like you know you guys you guys are known to do this and known to do that fuck all i'm trying to do is do the best job possible i never set out to be famous or well known or do any of that stuff i just i truly want to deliver the best product i, I want my members to leave and be like, man, I go to the best gym. I have the best facility. And a lot of it's from, and this is what I tell people all the time, be selfish. You know, be selfish in the fact that, that you want it good, that you want to create the best experience, that you want to do the best you can for other people. And going into the gym, you know, I have no problem spending my own money and spending my own time trying to deliver the best user and experience for my clients. Um, you know, if they're like, oh, we want these weights, well, I'll get them. And if they want this, then I'll get it. And I, they want this product in the gym. I try to do that because if they want it, then there's probably five or six other people who want it. But a lot of times the stuff that I have 
have there is stuff I use. You know, I, I love, I sell virus, uh, clothes in my gym, branded with our stuff. I sell Lululemon stuff. I sell Reebok. Um, I mm -hmm. sell a shit ton of fade. I mean, I talk to those guys obviously all the time because I still work with them. Um, and, you know, I use the same stuff that I'm selling people. So the most influential people in your gym are your coaches and the people who run the place. I mean, the gym owners. So whatever you're doing, if you truly believe it, not just because some fucking company's paying you three or four hundred bucks to make a post about it, what are the products you really use? You know, and what do you think it actually is worth buying and having? Um, and start stocking your gym with it and using those products and then you will be, you know, I mean, it's such an overused term these days, but an influencer because it's the stuff that you like to use. Don't do it because Jason Kalipa does it or because this one does it because that one does Do it because you like it, you know, kind yeah. of form your own identity and you'll form your own tribe. Well, 100%. And these, you know, your members want to, to you're the tribe leader, right? So they want to fall in line with what yeah. you're doing. So if you are selling things that you mm -hmm. believe in, by default, they're going to see you using this, see you excited about it. And because you are kind of where they want to be or someone that they look up to when it comes to this stuff, you are going to help. I mean, you're going to start moving units and so on. So it's, it's a win-win because you're providing them a good product. You believe it, you use it. Um, yeah. it's, it's really how it should be. And, and you know what you're saying about, uh, you know, providing like really it being about your members and, and making sure that they have the best damn experience possible. I mean, we, you know, this show is, is about helping gym owners or helping the motivated gym owners of the space, you know, become more successful. And we talk about all sorts of different tactics and strategies and whatnot. But at the end of the day, it's really what it boils down to is it's, it's a matter of, yeah. you know, you're in this business because you want to help impact people and you want to, you want to make sure that people are achieving you know, their, their highest potential. And it's that passion for, from you, from inside, that's going to help drive everything forward. And it should really be at the core of your decision-making. Obviously we want to make sure that the, there's a, there's a strategy to that and that what we're doing makes sense, but it's really the essence of, of what is moving the entire thing forward. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I think a lot of the opportunities that have come my way and the things that I kind of hold on to for a while, like every brand that I've worked with through the fitness space, I've been working with for years mm -hmm. um, and it's only because I was a consumer of those products. I would buy those products and it's the same thing with my gym. Um, I want to create the best experience so that if I was a member, would I pay to go there? You know, you have to ask yourself that question on a daily basis. As soon as you walk in the door of your gym, you're like, is this a place I would pay X amount of dollars to come to? And the same thing when you guys asked me to do this podcast, I'm like, oh, I'd love to do that because I want to, I'm not, not going to affect everybody. And I'm sure there's people out there who are like, this guy's a jerk off. He doesn't even know what he's talking about. And then there's going to be somebody else where that tidbit of information that I share with them might change the way they operate. And when I'm in Utah or Chicago or New York or wherever I may be, where I might need to use another gym, you know, mm -hmm. I'll be like, man, this place is really great. I'm going to send my members here because I have close to 600 people who go to my gym. They're always like, Hey, I'm going to be in. Wisconsin this weekend, and where should I? Go? Hey, I'm gonna be in Colorado this weekend. Where should I go? I love helping other people be su successful because, again, it's like you're not. I'm not winning alone. You know, it's yeah. like I can only affect so many people in New York. If you're doing that somewhere else and doing it really good, then when my clients are abroad or they're moving there, you know, I have to send them somewhere. One of my good friends from my gym just moved to California. Hmm. Where about? And I sent them to a friend's gym. Um, she's moving to West Hollywood. You know, oh, okay. Um, and a friend of mine who I've been friends with for five, six years runs a uh, CrossFit slash hit style gym out there, uh, the brick in LA. Um, and I sent her over there because I'm like, the girl who runs that studio, this girl Erica, is one of the best coaches I've ever worked with. You know, cares about the membership, knows what she's talking about, is embedded in the community. It's like, go see her because I know she'll do a better, just as good a job as me, if not. Not better, you know. So it's it's good to have, and we strengthen the whole community. It's like when I look at the landscape of fitness, you know, there's so much bullshit out there nowadays. It's like everybody who's a fucking accountant today is now a trainer, and it's like more power to them. Yes, great, everybody should be fit. There's plenty of people to help. The the obesity epidemic is you know second to none. So yes, we should have more people, but 
they should be educated and they should be doing the right things, not just getting into the world. One of the biggest things that I hate about the fitness space is that everybody's like, well, there's money in fitness to get into that. You know, let's go into fitness because there's money to be had in there. But, you know, well, I think the goal and the purpose needs to be more righteous than just making money. You, you go into a finance world, yeah, you're there to make money. You know, you go into other fields, it's like, yeah, you, you could go and play, but I don't think successful people set out to be famous and successful. I think they set out to do what they love to do really well, and then money's the byproduct of it. Absolutely. So you guys are in New York, which is, I mean, California, we're here in Southern California where I'm at is pretty damn competitive when it comes to fitness, but you know, New York, Miami and, and Southern California are pretty much the, the most competitive markets with this stuff. What are you guys doing? I mean, that is the whole state of fitness in New York is evolving like crazy. What are you guys doing to stand out? Yeah. Well, so, I mean, most of the other markets are very spread out. Like for instance, if you're in New York, you know, I live six blocks from my gym between in my apartment and the gym, I pass five other studios, six other studios. So I potentially walk around the block and hit another studio mm -hmm. in either direction. Uh, you know, I never, you know, I like to know what other people are doing. Obviously, you should be educated on what, you know, what's out there in the market. Um, and if you're borrowing ideas and taking ideas from different people, not just taking the exact same idea, I feel like a lot of people are like, I want to start a cycling studio and I'm just going to change the color of fucking lights that are in the studio. It's not just about the color of lights. It's like, why are you getting into the cycling world? If you are a cyclist and you love cycling, then you should go and start a cycling studio because then that's something you're going to do on a daily basis. I got into the gym world because I said to myself 10 years ago, I go, if I wasn't at work on a daily basis and I, I was doing television stuff and even there I was just like, fuck, this is miserable. I can't wait till this is over so I could go home. Mm -hmm. and then go to the gym. Like, I loved being in the gym. I love the culture. I love the environment. I love the atmosphere. Um, so that's what I said to myself. I'm like, this is where I would be if I wasn't doing, making money or doing anything else. Um, so I think people need to gravitate towards where they want to be and what they want to do. I mean, think of it. Every, look how much money people make on Etsy, you know, crocheting little n napkins or suits or whatever that fuck your man you know um you could make money anywhere because there's a niche for everything and it's so easy to access people nowadays and what we're doing is you know i i think the guy who originally owned the gym kind of instilled like kind of put a lot of faith into me where they saw how passionate i was about running the gym and taking care of the client and doing all those things where they kind of let me run with the ball a little bit and that's kind of how i ended up where I'm at was because I'm like, I, I, I was there all the time. I was there at 5 a.m. I was there at 5 p.m. I was there at 10 p.m. You know, I was there all the time trying to create the best experience, you know, and it's, it's not something somebody had to tell me to do. It's not something I worked on. It's not something I fucking read a book about. It was what I naturally did, what I gravitated towards. I'm like, well, I want to meet the client. I tell them, well, I want to know what they're like. I want to know what they're about. Um, I want to work out in the middle of the day. I want to work work out with the clientele at night and know what they're all about. So I kind of created, you know, my persona in the gym of, of being, being somebody who's there all the time, something they can rely on, something they can work out with. Um, but as far as like the marketing stuff goes, I, I always think tend to keep it simple and give it a breath of like real, like I love comic books and I love working out. And, you know, one of the things we just, just implemented over the past six months. I just created, uh, we call it build and build is basically a bodybuilding class. It was what I wanted to do when I wasn't doing CrossFit, you know, the, the functional bodybuilding stuff. stuff. Like mm -hmm. I want, we, you don't do a shit on a uh, bench pressing and CrossFit and our hit style classes. You really don't touch a barbell much because it's more of an entry level class where you don't get to mess with the barbell. Cause there's a lot of instruction that goes into it. So I kind of created this program with a couple other people who I would be interested in doing it, members, some of the coaches, and now it's one of the most successful programs at our, our gym. Um, so it came out of maybe a selfish place for me, but it benefited a bunch of other people. So I think if you're living in your community and you're creating what you want to create, you're going to start to formulate that, um, you know, that belief in you and people are going to start to gravitate towards that. Uh, we, 
we don't do a ton of external marketing. You know, I, I kind of create a community where I'd want to live and where I'd want to be. And when people are in town or people are traveling, I'm always like, yeah, come here, here. The first ones on me, I want that because that's what I'd want if I was somewhere. So I try to create what I want, um, in a space, it's clean, it's nice, it's got new equipment, it's got friendly people. Like that sells anywhere. You know, customer mm-hmm. service sells anywhere. So I try to create the best customer service experience as well. And you know, eventually it gets around. You know, we've been on. I've been there a little over three years now, and that's what I work on every day. It's like when people come in, greet them, make them feel at home. If somebody walks into your house, walks into your apartment. Are you just going to ignore them? Are you going to let them just touch all your shit or are you going to greet them? You're going to offer them a drink. You know, it, it's simple. You know, so I, I, I think it's over time that we've created this, uh, this idea of what we are. Uh, that's awesome, man. And it, I'd like to dig a little deeper on the whole build program because I see that becoming something um, – I'm, I'm hearing that more and more and I feel like it's been uh, an inevitability yeah. – uh, as this is continuing to evolve, right? The whole functional fitness space. And as it, as it starts to broaden beyond just the people who are super performance centric, but using a lot of this stuff for, you know, aesthetic purposes, which is really what a lot of people, you know, that were not yeah. into the scene before are, are really after. Um, how did you like, tell us a little bit about the program and, and kind of how you started it and got it off the ground. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it was, you know, with anything, with anything, uh, with any program, you got to kind of tread lightly. You know, you don't want to overhaul the whole gym. Mm-hmm. You, know, you don't want to create all this other stuff. But we had some space where we were doing a lot of starting strength. So we had solid strong that's been there since the beginning. And it was deadlifting, bench pressing, you know, basically starting strength, more grip toe stuff um, that one of our coaches, Mike Wolf, would run. Um, he'd run them in. And a cycle forms basically six week pro, uh, six to eight week cycles. People come in, they do it. Um, I've done probably six or seven myself. Um, and what, what I, what the buzz was that they're like, oh, well, I wish we could do more. I wish we could do more of this in it and more of that in it. And then, so, you know, if you're doing the program the way it's meant to be done, you don't obviously add a lot of other stuff in there. You can't do CrossFit in the middle of it. But I'm like, all right, well, if I'm going to fill this hole in my, my gym and my community where people feel that something's missing, then why don't I just kind of create a program? You see it. I mean, if it, no one's reinventing the way the human body moves. Everyone's like, oh, there's a new gym. Oh, there's this new thing. It, we push, we pull, we squat, we hinge. You know, in locomotion, we're not doing much else. And when people are like, oh, we're creating this new thing, it's ever circulating. It's always the same shit. So it's like bodybuilding was big and then hit styles stuff was big and now it's coming back and then CrossFit and then now it's coming back around to bodybuilding. So it's, we're not reinventing anything. We're just doing the same shit over and over again. And now we're just, we're learning more. So it's, it's evolving into a better type of program. Um, so the build program is, is, you know, a lot of, you know, we kind of throw in some conjugate stuff in there and we do a lot of finishers with it. So it's basically CrossFit programming. You're kind of changing it up. We're not really adding the, the cleans and badges because that's pretty much what's intimidating to most people. Um, we're doing a lot of uh, four by twelves and four by tens and kind of the uh, very stereotypical bodybuilding programming mixed with a little bit of hit and CrossFit stuff in there. Um, and lifting, powerlifting. Like the other day, we did snatch grip deadlifts. You know, people hate snatching, but you tell them to snatch grip deadlift, they're like, "Oh, this is, this is a new deadlift." I'm like, "No, it's not really a new deadlift." I mean new to you but yeah so um so it's kind of tricking people into staying in the community almost too because now they're like well i like doing this and i like doing this and i like doing this I'll try weightlifting then because i heard that's really cool and that's i've done this and this so i've already done it already you know our hitso uh studio kind of leads everybody into accepting the idea that you're going to push and you're going to work hard and all that and then they get into the build or the the uh, strength cycle or the weightlifting, and then it ultimately leads them into CrossFit, where you get a little bit, a little bit of everything into that. Um, so we have these like pillars of fitness, where it's like depending on what your mood is that that month or that you know next two months, that's where you're going to gravitate towards, and that's why we have members who have been there for three or you know two years. You know nobody really leaves because they're like, well, I like being here, and they offer all the shit I like doing. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, you guys offer a ton of different programs. I mean, I see, you know, you've got body, CrossFit, build, endurance, sculpt, yoga, core, mobility, brave body projects, squad, wad, strength training, gymnastics, Olympic lifting. I mean, you guys cover all the bases. So, I mean, in essence, once if someone loves the brand and loves the people who are teaching the programs, you're, you're going to keep people for such a long period because they can kind of, like you said, they can kind of hopscotch around as their interests evolve or, or shift over time that if they like the brand, they're going to stick around and they're not going to leave because of, of all the different options you guys have. Yeah. Well, like you, a lot of stu studios here in New York, I'd say our biggest competition is like, well, what about the other CrossFit gyms? I'm like, I don't really consider CrossFit a, a competition anymore. Like are there any other CrossFit gyms? It's more the boutique studios where they're doing, and but one, they're getting one thing, you know, they're offering one product, um, you know, and, and most instructors there aren't really doing what they're selling. You know, I always say to people like, oh, you should try that gym. Try that gym. I'm like, they offer one thing. And I go, those trainers don't look like that because they're doing that class. You know, right. those guys who are jacked off their ass aren't just fucking boxing to be that big. You know, it's right. like I boxed for years. It's like, yeah, I love the shape I was in. It was great. But aesthetically, it's like if you're going to put on muscle, you better be pushing a fucking barbell around. You know, right. so my th thing is like, I do what I sell. I sell what I do, you know, mm. you know, and a lot of, a lot of other studios, they're, they're not doing that stuff. It's like, I love to do yoga. I don't want to do yoga all the time. I'm not a yogi. I'm not drinking kombucha and shit every day, but like, I like a little yoga in my life. <laughs> it's, it's like, oh, it's good for you. You should be doing it. And some people like doing it more than others. That's fine. I don't care. And then other people just want to dabble it in. So I offer that as a thing because I like doing it. I know other people benefit from doing it. So we should offer that. Um, what we again it's like what we think works and what we do we offer i wouldn't want to take that away from anybody and you know kind of putting it in a clean nice environment with great instructors and people who genuinely care like i just hired someone new the other day and i was saying and i go i don't hire you because i think you're going to be some superstar instagram I'm famous you know tweeting all the time bullshit i go i want you to be a good person first right. i want you to believe in this product i want you to be a, embedded in the community not because you think you're going to make it here but because you truly believe in what we're doing and then all the other shit i could teach you 100 you know? percent. um it's the people it's the your coaches are the product you know i say this all the time and yeah, people get so hung 100%. up on other shit when it's like look if you have people who legitimately care about people about other people and about what it is that you guys do there specifically and it's, mm -hmm. it's going to be authentic and that's what is the most attractive thing is authentic care and passion is undeniable. So if someone has a need for what your service solves and you're authentic and you're passionate, it's a done deal. Yeah, a hundred percent. And it, everything else, it's my high school football coach told me this. He's like, if you take care of the little things, the big things take care of care of themselves. If you're doing the things on a daily basis, that you should be doing keeping the gym clean, keeping people happy make sure the equipment's you know clean and neat and um you know always updating things all the big stuff takes care of itself it's i don't do a lot of external marketing because i don't need to because i don't want to touch a billion people i'm never going to get to it and I'm, i start, start to forget people i originally started with so i'd rather hold on and groom somebody and take care of one person mm -hmm. than take care of everyone because I, I'm, I'm never going to be able to do that you know sure so uh, we obviously we when we put together the the topic for the show we said you know using social media to grow and all that I know we're we're kind of covering a lot of different bases but you know and when you say you don't do a lot of external marketing what what are you guys doing to create awareness beyond obviously just the word of mouth and and just your existing community but obviously there's there's a layer of it of of intention and in putting yourself out there what what would you say your 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 biggest channel or, or biggest tool is that you guys are using and, and how does that kind of work? Uh, um, I would say, uh, you know, we do offer, like we, we kind of do blast out some stuff with, with um, you know, we, we run like a six week challenge to introduce people to the gym. Mm -hmm. uh, we try some of the hit style classes. Uh, we kind of throw them into that first, like kind of an introduction. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of gyms do this and I think uh, some obviously do it better than others. And I wouldn't even say we're the, that great at um but doing six-week challenges kind of getting people in the 
your letting them know where they're at and where we could get them. So it's like, here, stick with this program for six months. Um, we use a company called 321Go. Uh, so if you guys want to use uh, use that, 321Go is basically a company that takes you from A to B, and they kind of do a lot of the external marketing and they do, uh, you know, t- kind of targeted demographic stuff. They, you know, they, they find people in their area who are interested in fitness, and they kind of just blast them an email and see if they'd be interested in it. Mm-hmm. But a lot of the people we have are, uh, you know, we also do class pass, which is huge in LA and Miami and New York, um, which everybody here in New York uses. Uh, it's a good way to people who are interested in fitness but don't really know where they want to go. I, I always say like class pass is a great way for people to enter into the fitness space for the first time, kind of get to use a lot of the gyms that would cost them a fortune if they were going to bounce from one to one. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, people find us and they, they to, uh, tend to stay, you know, I had some people who <laughs> have been coming to the gym for like two years and they finally joined the gym because uh, they're like, well, you guys got everything here. So I could just be here and it makes it, it easier and I have to bounce around and, because it becomes annoying, like traveling and commuting in New York. Uh, most of the time you're on foot or on the train and especially when it snows and it's cold or it's raining, you're like, well, I don't really want to go that far. I'm not trying to market to somebody who lives on the Upper West Side of New York. In fact, I don't think I have one member who's from the Upper West Side of New York. I don't even know what goes on up there. I mean, it, that place is like beyond the fucking wall for me because it's like no one goes up there. It's too big of a pain in the ass to get up there. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I kind of try to cater to my uh, area. Like we're right in the Flatiron District or uh, I guess, what do they call it? No uh, – nomad area in New York and you know I work with a lot of the local businesses as well hotels that are around there I'm like hey listen I know you guys don't have the space to have a gym why don't you guys come here offer your clientele to come here and we can you know kind of barter and brand uh, you know brand each uh, together love it you know that's another way we kind of uh, draw people in uh, uh, there's a hotel right next door there's a hotel around the block I mean New York has no shortage of hotels um the restaurants and the bars. It's like I go and hang out there. I tend to be a pretty social guy. I like to hang around with other social people. My coaches uh, are, you know, kind of the, uh, the clientele. And when you give people like a reason to talk about your gym and want to be there and be like, oh, you should come try my gym. Oh, you should come over here. You love it, blah blah. That's kind of how we get a lot of people. You know, I have members who've brought in five, six, ten people in. There's a record label. Um, a couple blocks away called 300. Um, and they, uh, they start, they are the first ones to start with like Fetty Wap and a lot of these guys. Mm-hmm. And some of the, the people there loved it so much that they, the, the company started paying for the entire office to come to the gym and work, work out. That's great. So, you know, we have 15, yeah, 15, 20 members just from one office. You know, we got a bunch of people who live in the office upstairs in New York. It's, there's so many people. I mean, there's such concentration, but again, there's so many options as well. So like you said, it's like, how do you stand out? It's like, I just try to do what I need to do on a daily basis and create that best product possible. Yeah. Right on, man. What would you say? Um, like what, what has been, how can I say this? So you have, we have people of all, all experience levels watching this show. What would you say if you, if you could give a gym owner one piece of advice, what would it be? simplest thing that I see that most gyms don't do and I think a lot of guys take offense when I stop in other gyms is keep the fucking place clean you know there's so many people who especially CrossFit gyms you know boutique studios they tend to have like cleaning crews and stuff CrossFit gyms feel this need to oh well it's dingy it could be dingy it could be tough it could be rugged it doesn't have to be fucking dirty you know (laughs) keep the place clean simple things if you see dust on the floor, dirt on the floor, barbells not put away and dumbbells all over the place. Your members see it too. They probably see it before that. You know, one of the best analogies I've heard, um, and it's so simple, you go to a hotel, you fly across the country or you're up or wherever you're at, you get to a hotel and the bed, the pillow's out of place. Just the pillow. I'm not even talking about the fucking sheets or there's dishes in the sink. I'm saying if the pillow's out of place, wouldn't you be like, eh, that's kind of weird. Like, who was in here? You know, you expect everything to be the pristine in the way it should be. 
it's the same thing in a gym. Yes, I know it's a different environment and people, there's a lot more people to take care of and you don't have somebody coming in every class, but you know, your coaches and your, your members, you should set the standard for how the gym should look aesthetically. Um, and if it's pleasing to the, that's step number one. Step number two is, you know, making sure your, your, your staff is happy before your clients, because if your staff is happy, then they're going to keep the clients happy. You know, Absolutely. if you were making sure you, you could give them whatever you can, help them out, truly give a shit. I can't tell people, like, pretend you give a shit because eventually that wears off. If you, you truly care about the people you hire, then treat them like that. Like, treat them like family. I try to do as much as I could for my – I'm sure some of them will say differently. But, you know, I work with Reebok. So all my, all, all my staff has Reebok stuff, free Reebok gear. You know, I work with Fitty. Every – Everybody has fit aid all the time. You know, anything I have, I try to give to them because I want them to be, be happy. And I, I've always, I grew up in a house with uh, two brothers and a sister and a family that, that was broke. So we shared everything. So I think it was just innate in me to like want to give and want to share and not just hold things to myself. Um, so with that, it's, you know, I, I'm very willing to share any opportunities or anything that comes my way with my staff. And, some are great about it. They love it and they're, they're super happy about it and they're pumped and they produce a great product and my members see that and everybody, it trickles down. Um, sure. Well, it's but all, if, you're not, if you're not treating them well. Yeah, it's, it's all top down, straight up. Like I said, you know, a little yeah. bit ago, it is you, the coaches at a gym are the product. And I, I mean, I also am someone who's super aesthetically, you know, focused or it's, it's a big priority for my gym to be beautiful. Um, just because I like a really nice, clean, aesthetically pleasing environment. Um, and, you know, so yes, having the place clean, but I think more than anything, it's yes, making sure that your staff is excited to be there and excited to make this the, the best hour of your member's day every hour on the hour. Because if they're not mm -hmm. stoked and they're just phoning it in and being like, yeah, here's the workout and, you know, people feel that. And that yeah, that sure. is really ultimately what, what hooks people in, even if your gym isn't clean or beautiful, if your people give a huge shit and they're happy, you, you're already a step ahead. Now you mix that with a, a clean aesthetically, at least like neutral, <laughs> it doesn't have to be some like crazy production, but just a clean place where people really care. You're, you're going to connect with people and people are going to feel that. So I, I hear where that's coming from. Yeah. my fr It's definitely a different world because here in New York, I have a, a full-time cleaning crew here at Solace, but when I had my own gym in Jersey, like some of the members make fun of me because they're like, dude, you're always cleaning. Why are you always cleaning? Same I'm like, here. If I don't do it, if I don't do it, no one does it. So it's like, I if I, if there was a chip in the wall, I'd repaint it. Mm -hmm. If someone was out of place, I'd fix it. You know, because I want people to be like proud of where they're at. You know, I want not only the staff, but the, the members. And the more I started to do it, and, and a great example of it is the uh, the whole broken window theory, the whole th thing that uh, Giuliani did back in the 90s. It's like every time somebody broke a window in New York, they get replaced because eventually the people who are breaking the window see that like, oh, somebody gives a shit down here. I, I'm going to stop breaking the window because they're just going to fix it again, you know? So I think it's like the more you show people you give a shit and the more you continue to put it, put things back, and clean things up, then other people are like, oh, I, I think I should do that too because it, it's kind of the standard. Yeah, no doubt. Um, so where can people learn more about you and, and what you got going on? I feel like you've, I see you all over the place and, and where can people learn more about what's going on with you? Um, just my Instagram, at Kenny Santucci. I work with, with um, Paul Walter and I think a lot of people are like, why do you work with a beer brand? Uh, because I'm a fucking human I you know <laughs> and they have a great <laughs> they have a they have a, a, a great little like campaign they're running um I've been with them this is the second year I'm with them and they're a really cool brand that's like hey you could live a normal lifestyle with you know and they're the only ones in the space doing it like you could live a normal lifestyle go to the gym and come home and have a beer it's okay we're doing it everybody thinks it's taboo um mm -hmm. but can still go and like live your life i'm not i never tell my clientele like oh you're going to a wedding with this week. don't drink don't do anything don't have a good time because on monday we got to work again it's like no 
that's realistic. You know, New Yorkers are realistic. Like, hey, you're going to go out this weekend? Have a Globe Ultra. It's so funny because I have people tag me in it all the time with pictures of them drinking the Globe Ultra. They're like, let's start drinking it because you put up a picture. I'm like, that's kind of the idea of the campaign. You know, I, I, <laughs> I like it. I enjoy it. I have, a, I, have, I have a case in my apartment because, like, if I want to kick my feet up and want, you know, Cobra Kai, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to have a beer. Sure. And I, I like that message of, like, it's, it's very similar to the Reebok message. And that's why I've always, you know, felt a fall. I fall in love with them like five years ago. It was like the be more human thing. Yeah. You know, I'm yeah, not like a machine. I don't want, yeah, I've never done – even when I played sports and stuff, it's like, yeah, I love – but I there's that human side to me. It's like I could go work out, but I also want to live my, my life too. I want to spend time with my family. I want to spend time with my friends. I'm going to have a beer. I'm going to go to the beach because for me to be that hard old guy all the fucking time, be like, I only hit the gym all the time, eat, drink protein shakes, and eat fucking bars, that's – no, it's not me. So I, I can't even pretend to be that guy. So yeah. it's like, yeah, if I'm going to have a beer, I might as well have a beer with a you know company that kind of believes in the same ideas as me. If I'm going to wear a sneaker, it might as well be the, a company that kind of believes in the same ideas. I'm not Michael Jordan. I you know I'm I'm not the best basketball player, the best, best athlete, or even the best coach. But I'm a human. I have my flaws and stuff. But I like I like the idea of like understanding that people aren't going to be perfect. I'm not perfect. I'm okay with it okay with teaching other people like hey here's i could set you on the right path and you could do you know fuck up here and there but you know you're human that's that's the goal that's the point awesome man well cool well thank you very much for joining us this week man um and for those of you watching uh if you're in new york or planning on going to new york make sure you swing by solace new york check it out beautiful facility tons of great programs meet kenny um and the crew there and uh kenny thanks so much for being on Appreciate you and uh, everything you. you do in the space. And um, we'll see everybody here again next week. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Yeah.